these are going to be concrete planters and they're going to have a light in the middle. So we got that thing. I made sure this thing is heavy, heavy, heavy duty. Like nothing. This is the drainage going in. Spray it down with diesel. We got the pipes for the light. Going through there. The lights were last minute decision. That's why it looks like that, but it's all good. Rebar. This thing should not move an inch. Uh, one light right here. Three lights, three lights, one light, two lights. Supports are in. Everything is good. Now, the question is, will this thing move at all? I hope not. So they first pour it halfway to make sure the base dries up and then they pour the rest. And after about an hour or so, see this one is high priority because that one's under the sun. This one is not. It's just chilling in the shade, which is good. That one is gonna be first. This is second. I got a bunch of guys over there. They're gonna finish that. And this one is partly under the shade too, which is good. So they're gonna finish pouring this and then they're gonna come back or wrap it up. You know, sometimes on jobs like this, it seems like I got a lot of people, but you wanna have a lot of people because if something goes wrong, there's people there to do it. And you never wanna cheap out on having people there to help on concrete. Okay, on pavers, you don't have to have that many people, but on concrete, dude, you make a mistake. You're toast, you know? And it might be your employee's fault. It might be the concrete truck company's fault. It might be the pump fault. But at the end of the day, it's my fault. So, if they do something good, it's their fault. If they do something bad, it's my fault. Always take responsibility. Don't be a little bitch, but <coughs> keep everyone accountable, that's for sure. <coughs> but take responsibility for everything. I'm just choking on some popcorn. One thing, this little bit. So a bunch poured out. I had to wash this off. <laughs> This little thing is called a snake. It vibrates all the air up.
finished up, wrapped up all good. Check it out. I'll show you a little, I'll show you a little tour. I'll show you a little sneak peek of what an amazing job this is. This is for the hot tub. Pretty simple. 336 square feet of mud, six inches thick, 12 inches drop from the level. See the red line right there? I know you can't see it, but it's there. Just trust me, it's there. Right underneath the metal. So the hot tub is five feet tall. So now you're gonna walk from your deck over there. There's gonna be a wooden deck right here. You're gonna walk here. You're gonna jump over three feet because we dropped it a foot, okay? And then the deck is gonna come up a foot. So you're gonna jump over three feet and get into the hot tub. Doable, that's why we had to drop it a foot. See what I'm saying? And this is not an easy feat by any means. All this dirt is from here. Uh, we excavated from the level 26 inches down. I put geo fabric underneath. Put eight inches of base, compacted the shit out of it with our boy over here. Six inches of mud, done. Let's show you what we got here. What you wanted to come here for, for the video. What I showed you, beautiful. Beautiful. This is going to be a massive, beautiful Japanese maple right inside. And with a bunch of lights and all that stuff. And here, there's going to be a bunch of trees and stuff. Very nice trees. But look at the wall. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to show you one thing that I kind of messed up on, but just keep, keep watching. Everything is very straight because you saw... All the stakes. Literally, I think I have maybe $500 in wood that we use, but I'm saving all this because now I have a yard. Now, the one thing that was very tricky is to get these in. This is for the lights, for the connectors. And I think this slides in and out, yeah, see? Probably just gonna pop this out. But the one thing, I don't know if you can see it, but the wall is very straight on top and on here because we put a lot of forms but at the bottom it started to bow out a little bit a lot of weight a lot of weight but it actually ends up working well because once the dirt is pushing on it this will push back so very nice the walls on here turned out amazing that was kobe shooting a three nothing but net the smooth finish it just takes a lot of labor. So, like I said earlier, do not cheap out on having finishers when it comes to doing concrete work, especially walls. Time is of the essence. If you run out of time with concrete, you're going to have to knock it down and do it over. And the last thing you want to do is knock down a wall after you build it. It might come as a shock, but only 11% of the viewers that watch my videos stay to the end. And now I just want to reward you because you are staying till the end. So for the next four videos or maybe five videos or maybe six videos, I don't know, depends on when I feel like. I'm gonna be giving $100 cash away every single video. All you gotta do is drop below in comments what you liked about it and just drop a number, one to 100. And on the next video I post next week, I'll do a number generator. Boom, we'll hit it. The, video, the number will be there, done. $100, I'm going to PayPal you, Cash App, whatever you want, Apple Pay, Venmo. I'll tie a $100 pill to a pigeon and I'll send it. He'll fly to your house, you open the door, you get a pigeon and a $100 bill. So rules are, comment what you liked about the video and a number, one to 100. The next video, I'll do a number generator. I'll flip the camera to the screen, we'll see the number, it'll be in the next video. and. Boom, I'm gonna send you the money. So, holla, peace out.